inside the M4 Sherman. One of the most famous aspects of the Second World War was the introduction of fast-moving maneuver warfare. Spearheading lightning-fast advances into enemy territory were high-performance tanks, a far cry from the clunky metal boxes of the First World War. Among the famous tank designs that roamed the battlefield, there are few as iconic or as controversial as the American M4 Sherman. By the 1930s, the United States lagged behind other world powers in tank development. As the buildup to war began in Europe, American planners devised the M2 and M3 tanks, vehicles that were hoped to be sufficient for any future conflict. After the outbreak of hostilities, a number of M3 Lees were shipped to Great Britain and renamed the M3 Grant as part of Lend-Lease agreements. Its performance was met with mixed reactions. The M3 was a robust and reliable tank that operated well in the harsh conditions of North Africa, but the positive features of the vehicle ended there. It had a tall profile, making it easy to spot and providing a large target for enemy fire. Another unfortunate aspect of its design, however, was the lack of a rotating turret. The main gun was mounted on a side position sponson with a limited firing arc, which meant that the entire vehicle would have to pivot around to engage targets. With these limitations in mind, American planners used the blueprints of the M3 as well as the M2, but made it larger and more powerful. As early as April 1941, plans for the M4 Sherman were being drawn up, and by September of that year, the first prototype was ready for testing. After a few minor adjustments, the M4 was ready for full-scale production by February of 1942. Production and Variants The Sherman was designed to be simple and easy to mass produce. Over the course of the war, 11 factories churned out M4s in prodigious numbers. By the time the production had ceased, almost 50,000 were made, second only to the Soviet T-34 in sheer volume. Because of the simple nature of the M4's chassis, modifications to the basic design were easy to create, and numerous sub-variants were created, including more powerful tank destroyer versions, a flamethrower variant, and the chassis was used as the basis for a self-propelled howitzer, a tank recovery vehicle, and bridge layer. Dimensions the M4 Sherman is classified as a medium tank, weighing in at around 30 tons, with a length of 19 feet 2 inches, a width of 8 feet 7 inches, and it was 9 feet high, though this can change somewhat with each sub-variant. Performance The Sherman was propelled by a Continental R975C1 9-cylinder engine, capable of producing up to 400 horsepower, and was able to reach speeds of around 30 miles per hour. Later variants were given more powerful engines that could generate up to 450 horsepower. The fuel tank could hold up to 175 gallons of gasoline, giving it a maximum range of around 120 miles. Due to the simple and reliable construction, the M4 could traverse up to 4,000 miles before requiring maintenance, enabling it to stay in the field longer than many other tanks of the era. Should repairs be needed, the simple design meant that the crews could perform basic repairs themselves, rather than needing specialized equipment or dedicated mechanics. Are you prepared to relive history's most epic battles commanding a vast array of forces in an intense real-time strategy game? Welcome to Men of War 2, the new era of the highly acclaimed RTS franchise. Choose your side. Will you lead the American, Soviet, or German forces with over 300 historically accurate units across 45 battalions? Every battle is a new experience. Immerse yourself in not one, but five different campaigns. Fight on through epic narratives on both the eastern and western fronts. Rise victorious in brutal battles from the snowy Soviet hills to the war-torn ruins of European cities. For more of a challenge, test your strategic abilities in raid and conquest modes, something to truly challenge your mettle. These are dynamic and randomly generated, so no two playthroughs will ever be the same. The battlefield has never been more real. Buildings crumble, guns run out of ammo, vehicles are left dry of fuel, and every decision can turn the tide of war. Use the environment to your advantage, or watch as your enemies use it against you. Men of War 2 launches on September 20th, but you don't have to wait that long. Join the open beta from August 10th to the 14th. 
So what are you waiting for? Click the link below to join the action. Men of War 2 isn't just a game, it's an all-encompassing World War II RTS experience. See you on the battlefield, Commanders. Tank Crew The crew of a Sherman consisted of five men, the commander, the driver, a co-driver who also operated a machine gun, the gunner, and the loader. The interior of the M4 was spacious compared to many other tanks, and while the conditions were far from luxurious, it was marginally better than most contemporary vehicles. Access came from four hatches, two located on the front of the hull, another located on the top of the turret, and an escape hatch in the floor behind the driver's seat, which allowed the crew to abandon the vehicle in an emergency. The driver was located at the front left of the hull and steered the tank with a pair of control levers and floor pedals, with transmission controls directly to his right. Vision to the outside was originally provided by a vision slot, but this was replaced by a periscope. Drivers had a limited field of view and relied on the commander for accurate information to steer the tank. To his right sat the co-driver, who also operated one of the 30 caliber machine guns. Should the driver be incapacitated, he would step in as a replacement. Located behind was the gunner, who traversed the turret. Above him were the loader, who selected the appropriate ammunition and loaded the main gun, and the commander, who directed the tank and called out targets for the gunner to engage the gunner would fire by flipping a firing switch and using a foot pedal. The tank's commander could view the outside world through a mounted periscope, but this limited the field of vision, so many commanders would stick their heads outside the turret for a more clear view, making their position the most vulnerable to enemy fire. Commands were given verbally over an intercom system, but experienced crews would communicate non-verbally, such as the loader tapping the gunner with his foot to indicate a loaded gun, saving valuable seconds on the battlefield. Armor The Sherman was protected by up to three inches of steel armor plating, angled to help deflect incoming rounds. The armor was left deliberately limited in order to save weight, making the tank faster and more maneuverable, though sacrificing survivability to do so. The earliest version of the hull was made from cast steel, giving the tank its distinctive rounded appearance, while some later versions were welded. Later versions of the Sherman also featured thicker armor in response to encounters with their German counterparts. Tank crews in the field would often supplement the armor with improvised protection, often in the form of sandbags, cinder blocks, spare track links, or anything else they could scrounge. This type of armor provided limited additional protection, but also strained the suspension and engine, and General George Patton forbade this practice, though the troops continued to do it anyway. Armament the first variants of the Sherman to roll off the production line were equipped with a 75mm main gun. This was generally effective against many earlier German tanks, such as the Panzer III and IV, though later tanks such as the Panther and Tiger could easily deflect the low-velocity round, especially against their frontal armor. With the 75mm gun woefully inadequate against more advanced German tanks, a more effective weapon was needed. The British first came up with the idea to equip the Sherman with the much more powerful 17-pounder or 76.2mm gun. This led to the development of the Firefly variant, which had a heavier suspension and an extended turret to accommodate the larger gun. This and other variants, including the E8 or EZ8, would use a 76mm gun, which had a much higher muzzle velocity and were more than sufficient to deal with German armor. All versions of the Sherman's main gun, with the exception of a 105mm variant, came with a gyro stabilizer. In theory, it allowed the gun to maintain its elevation even as the vehicle bounced along rough terrain. In practice, the equipment was complex, and many crews lacked the proper training to use or maintain it, and many simply didn't use it. In addition to the main cannon, the Sherman was equipped with a pair of 30 caliber machine guns, one located on the right side of the frontal hull, the other coaxial to the main gun. A larger 50 caliber machine gun was mounted on the outside of the turret for both anti-personnel and anti-aircraft capabilities. Users and post-war service. 
Due to the vast numbers, reliable and simple design, and ease of production, the M4 was sent virtually to every major battlefront of the war. Though the vast majority were used by the Americans, lend lease supply shipments saw Shermans in use by the British, Soviet, Free French, and other Allied armies. China was given a hundred of the M4A4 variants by Britain to use against the Japanese forces in Burma. Even the Germans made use of a few captured tanks. Shermans also had an extensive history after the war, used as the main battle tank of the American armed forces in the Korean War, as well as by other nations, including Israel, Greece, Yemen, Iran, Iraq, India, Pakistan, and a host of others, even into the 1970s. Myths and Reputation Few tanks are as controversial as the Sherman. Its poor reputation stems from its inadequate performance against German tanks, especially the heavier Panther and Tiger variants. The earlier version with the low-powered 75mm gun proved futile against the frontal armor of these vehicles, forcing tank crews to maneuver for a shot to the side or rear of the enemy, often relying on sheer numbers to destroy the enemy tank from multiple directions. While it is true that the 75mm gun was underpowered for this role, they were continually produced even after the 76mm versions were created. The Sherman wasn't designed as a tank destroyer, but for general purposes. Most engagements that the Sherman found itself involved in was supporting infantry, and its targets were machine gun nests, bunkers, and field artillery pieces, something the 75mm gun was more than capable of dealing with. Another myth involves the nickname of the M4 as Ronson's, after the lighter company who had a slogan, lights the first time, every time. Ronson did not adopt that slogan until the 1950s, making the reference a post-war fallacy. It is true that earlier Shermans would burst into flame after being hit by the enemy, often launching the turret clear of the hull. This was initially blamed on the engine and the gasoline fuel, which combusts much more readily than diesel. A study performed by the Army soon found that this was not due to the engine, but it was due to ammunition stored in the turret, which could set off a chain reaction after being hit. This problem was mitigated by removing the ammunition stored there and adding additional armor plating to ammo storage areas. These and other myths give the M4 Sherman an unearned reputation as an inferior tank. Realistically, it had its flaws and shortcomings, but was a very well-built general-purpose tank that fulfilled its role on the battlefield well.